Hello, my dear dental mates. First of all, thank you. Thank you so much for this beautiful abundant family. I express my deepest gratitude to all for the love you guys are showering on me. Now, let's get started with the video. So, in this video, we'll be talking about the access opening of mandibular first molar. Let us first look at its anatomy. The crown of the mandibular first molar can have four or five cusps. There are two mesial, mesiobuccal and mesolingual cusps and two distal, distobuccal and distolingual cusp. Sometimes there can be a fifth distal cusp present on the buccal side which is known as the distal cusp. So there are total four or five cusps present in the crown of a mandibular first molar. Now the root, the root of mandibular first molar, there are usually two roots, mesial and distal. Along with that, sometimes there could be an extra root present which is known as radix. Now, if this root is present distally, that is in the distolingual side, it is known as radix entomolaris. Whereas if this root is present mesially, which is on the mesobuccal side, then this is known as paramolaris. So if it is lingual, then it is entomolaris and if it is buccal, then it is paramolaris. Now, if we draw the pulp chamber or the pulp of a mandibular first molar, what we can see is the pulp, it has four pulp horns. See, this is the pulp of the mandibular first molar. Here is the roof and this is the floor. Now, the roof contains pulp horns as we have discussed in our theoretical videos. The pulp horns in mandibular first molar are four, mesobuccal, mesolingual, distobuccal and distolingual. If we take a cross section at the roof area of the mandibular first molar, what we'll see is the roof is rectangular in shape. Whereas if we take a cross section of the floor, the floor is rhomboidal in shape. So there would be whatever canal orifices are present at the floor or at the CE junction level, there would be it they would they would be located at a rhomboidal shape. Now, if we talk about the orifices which are present at the cemento enamel junction level, then mesial, there could be two or three orifices, which is mesiobuccal, mesolingual, and an extra mid mesial orifice. Distal also, similarly, there could be distobuccal, distolingual, or an extra mid distal orifice, which is extremely rare to find. This is the case which we'll be discussing and performing an access opening today. First of all, when we look at the clinical picture of the patient, we have to see what are, which side which is present. So we have a mesial and distal side. Along with that, since this is a large carious lesion, we'll be taking a carious approach for the axis opening. There we have the buccal and the lingual sides. If you look at the cusp, this is the mesobuccal, mesolingual, distobuccal and distolingual cusp. Now we'll go for a radiographic evaluation. In the radiograph, first of all, we can see a caries which has evolved, involved the pulp. The roots are curved distally. Along with that, if we look carefully in the apical third of the mesial root, we can see that it is curved slightly mesially, whereas the distal root is curved distally only. Then we will evaluate the pulp chamber for any pulp stones if present. Along with that, we'll look at the size of the pulp chamber. And also, we can measure preoperatively with the help of the radiograph, the root length and the total length of the teeth. So what are the things we see in a radiograph? We see the mesodistal tilt of the tooth, the size and the shape of the pulp chamber, the roof thickness. Along with that, we can see, we can evaluate it for the presence of pulp stones. See here, if we'll carefully look at the roof, at the floor, we can see certain ragged borders which indicate the presence of pulp stones. Then there are variations in the canals of the root. For this, we have to take an angulated radiograph. Along with that, we can see the extent of the root and the curvature of the root. The periapical status of the patient, of course. So here we start with a small round bird to remove the caries. The caries has to be removed always from periphery to the center. So first we will remove all the caries which are present in the periphery of the tooth. 
with a small round ball. So for a small round ball, the working direction, the ball can be directed apically, but if we switch or whenever we switch to the EX24 or the safe end ball, the ball has to be always operated in a lateral cutting direction and not in an apical direction. Here, we are removing the KDs first from the periphery and then from the center using a small round toe. Rubber dam isolation is must before we start any root canal procedure. So first we'll infiltrate NSC to the patient, perform rubber dam isolation and then we'll start with the access opening procedure. So here once we have removed the peripheral caries, we can appreciate the enamel denti, the roof. Here we can clearly see the raw of color change and the chamber. Now what we'll do is we'll try to de-roof the chamber. Okay. Here, since I have clear visibility, I am using a small round burr, but preferably once you get the first burr drop, it is advised to switch to EX24, which is the safe end burr. After removing the slight caries which were present still in the periphery, we will start removing or will start de-roofing the pulp chamber. So here we have started to de-roof the pulp chamber. Care should be taken to not use any burr in the floor of the pulp. Now we'll switch to the safe end burr in a lateral cutting motion. See, in this video, I've depicted the lateral cutting motion, how it is done. Care should be taken to not use or to not run the burr on the floor of the pulp chamber. After completely de-roofing the pulp chamber, we have to gain a straight line access to all the orifices and to the canals. Now we can appreciate three mesial and two distal canal orifices here. Mesobuccal, mid-mesial, mesolingual, distobuccal and the distolingual orifices. This is the mesolingual canal, this is the mesobuccal canal and this is the mid-mesial canal. It is always advisable to scout for the mid-mesial canal or the mid-distal canal while opening a mandibular first molar. I am slightly de-roofing the area around the mid-mesial canal. So here we can clearly appreciate the three mesial canals. And the two distal canals. This is our traditional access cavity preparation in which we have a straight line access to the pulp chamber. And we have located five canals in the mandibular first molar which is the mesobuccal, mid-mesial, mesolingual, distobuccal and distolingual canal. With this, I conclude this topic. Do let me know in the comment section below if this video has helped you. Also, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the love and abundance. I wish you all happiness and success in life.